There's lots of things we can do with the music to push and pull in different directions. But also, it has to roll with the story. I think that's the main thing, and we're trying to do that in this film. Working with a, a large orchestra is always rewarding for any composer, you know. I mean, I don't conduct. A lot of composers do conduct, but I also uh, have a lot of other elements that the orchestra is, you know, playing with, and it's much better for me to be in the, in the control room listening. Call me crazy, but I think it should be a bow for the first eighth note, done very, very lightly. So the general opinion was that the DNA of the first one musically should be there in the second one, so we've used quite a lot of the same themes. We tried to design a score that was very untraditional. You know, many discussions that we've been having uh, over the course of scoring this movie is that how traditional in a way, uh, an action film, should it be? And where do we keep people in suspense by the fact that they're waiting for the usual cues that you get from music? And so we really tease them. <laughs> we start in Goa. But there was something about Goa and Marie that we realized that that's where we should establish a, a new theme. So we, put, we, we wrote a new theme for that moment, and that's basically a useful device to follow him as it goes through the movie. Percussion's always been, you know, was a big part of the first, first movie and the second movie, and um, so we, we really have been playing with a lot of Bangra dolls, the type of Indian drum, and that style of drumming is, is a very sharp sound and a very fast moving sound, so I've been able to give the film a lot of aggressive speed. For instance, the, you know, the funeral pyre scene where he burns the photos of Marie, and it's a sad, it's a terribly sad moment for the character. I mean, he's, he's grieving. So there's lots of ways of doing that. You know, you could play the sad music, and then at a certain point where, you know, you could then you could play sort of action music as he sort of gets to the cottage and starts getting his things together. It's suddenly a very fast cut scene, but what I wanted to do was was start that idea earlier, start that idea in in his head. So I took these massive drums and just ran it through the whole thing. So you have this paradox of music. You have a beautiful grief going on in the strings. And at the same time, you have this, this rage. That's maybe in a more unusual way of doing a scene like that. Definitely more influenced by Peter Gabriel than, you know, than, uh, than film scores of the past. One of the things we're doing is we're always trying to allow you to be with Jason all the way through the film. And there's two, there's two sides to that. Well, there's the emotional state he's in, the mourning, the grieving that's going on throughout the whole film, but also actually the mystery of what, what he's really walking towards because the audience doesn't know actually that he's going to end up in Russia apologizing for being a murderer. I'm sorry. Oh, the structure of the film is such that when you get to the end, it's all to do with that moment in the car where Marie says to him, you do have a choice. It's never going to be over like this. I don't want We don't have a choice. Yes, you do. I mean, that's very formal sort of st structural music composition to, to do that, and it, it gives this arch form that feels convincing. <laughs> 